Is Ryan Blaney responsible for Kyle Larson hitting the barrels at Homestead Miami on Sunday? Late in Sunday's race, with just over 50 laps to go, Ryan Blaney and Kyle Larson came in for a pit stop, and Ryan Blaney was leading the way. He comes into pit road, and he enters going about the same speed as your grandpa driving a Buick trying to go to the post office. It was pretty slow. He took a really conservative approach getting onto pit road to make sure he didn't speed. His prerogative, he's allowed to do what he wants to do. Kyle Larson, meanwhile, came flying in like he's a 16-year-old with a week-old license, and he was about to clobber the back of the 12 car. At the last second, he swerved to the right, clipped those barrels at the end of pit road, the attenuator, barrels, whatever you'd like to call them, sent Florida sand everywhere, all over the track. They had to red flag the race because of it. Barely touches Blaney, but his day was done because he broke a tie rod and they couldn't fix it within the five minutes of the damaged vehicle policy clock. So... The question is, did Ryan Blaney cause Kyle Larson to hit those barrels? And a lot of people, specifically Larson fans, seem to think that Blaney came onto pit road too slowly. And if you look at what NBC showed, you can see Blaney coming onto pit road and he's at pit road speed, or at least within the tolerance, well before he gets to the line. Again, playing it safe. Don't want to get a pit road mistake. Don't want to do a Denny Hamlin and ruin your entire race. Larson, meanwhile, he came in like he was trying to make up all the time in the world, which is totally fine. Again, be aggressive, and he can be aggressive. He just won at Las Vegas. He's already locked in to the championship race at Phoenix. He can come in there and be super aggressive. And instead of making it on the pit road and eating up that bit of a deficit that he had to Blaney, he comes in and hits those barrels. He does the reverse Kurt Busch in 2004. I know there's Chef Gordon fans sitting out there going, why couldn't Kurt Busch have done that in 2004 when he lost the tire coming to pit road at Homestead? Tire goes out onto the racetrack, gets a caution, Kurt Busch, meanwhile, doesn't hit those barrels and is able to just barely get onto pit road and save his day and win the championship as well. I know people had flashbacks to that. The other downside to this Larson thing, before we get into the rest of this, is the fact that we're going to see that clip now for the next 20 years. Matt Kenseth hit the barrels at Dover coming onto pit road in 2004, and every time we go back to Dover, we see that same clip, and we always have to hear, this is one of the most treacherous pit roads to get onto during green flag stops. Why? Because one time, Matt Kenseth hit these barrels 20 years ago, so that makes it treacherous. It is treacherous, but like... Let's be honest here. So now we're going to see that clip of Kyle Larson hitting those barrels every time we go back to Homestead. And that's really not a hard pit road to get onto. Larson afterwards apologized to Blaine. He said the last thing he wanted to do was ruin their day because they were having a really good run. And I don't think he ruined it necessarily. Blaney ends up finishing second in the race. But I do think that, you know, Larson misjudged it. And he owned up to it. And this is now his eighth DNF this season. And I've seen a lot of people be like, can he win a championship with eight DNFs? Well, he can. Darrell Waltrip did it. Did have 12 wins, uh, though. At the same time, though, you can't... It's hard to judge DNFs now compared to specifically years past because that DVP clock takes you right out of a race when you traditionally, in years past could go in there, repair the car, and then come back out on the track, and it didn't count as a DNF, you were just multiple laps down. Now you can't do that. Well, you can if it's a mechanical issue. You can't if it's crash damage, and what Larson had was crash damage. So for anybody thinking that Blaney caused this wreck, he, he didn't, right? This is all on Larson. And Larson maybe has a history of misjudging things uh, at rate of speed. Per se. I mean, we saw him at the Indianapolis Road Course say that he just misjudged the braking into turn one and he hit Ty Dillon like a cruise missile. I mean, he absolutely annihilated that guy and was just like, yeah, misjudged the braking zone. Oh, okay. Uh, that's certainly one thing kind of concerning. Uh, and now again, we see him coming to pit road here and he apparently didn't expect the 12 to check up that much because there is the thought process of what kind of Larson had of you can kill your speed into that first segment right there. So you can come in hot and then woe it way down and then get back up to your speed um, to even it out. And maybe that's what Larson was planning on doing, but he was coming in super hot there. So, I mean, Arca style almost. So Ryan Blaney, he ends up finishing second in the race. He has a run in with Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin raced him super hard as well. And when they finally, Denny finally ends up in the wall uh, going into turn one, Blaney keyed up the mic and was like, fuck you, dickhead, uh, as he passed him, which is just an aggressive way, and then calls him a hack after the race. Ryan Blaney is feeling himself, right? He wins a race at Talladega. He's right now sitting in a transfer spot to make it to Phoenix. He's feeling good about life, and good for him. Uh, typical Denny Hamlin fashion, manages to throw away his race win once again, which is, again, just very on-brand for Denny Hamlin. 
But Kyle Larson has the opportunity to be aggressive like that, right? Uh, he already got that win at Las Vegas, locks himself in, really wanted to win at Homestead, one, because he likes the track, but two, because that makes the other three drivers that want to lock in to Phoenix have to race really hard at Martinsville. It makes their lives a lot harder. Obviously, he doesn't win the race. Chris Rebell goes on to win the race. He locks himself into Phoenix already as well, and there's two spots left. And, you know, Ryan Blaine's got a 10-point advantage. And if he does really well in the stages and can at least hold on and not let, you know, Martin Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin, Tyler Reddick, Chris Buescher um, win, then, yeah, like, he has a shot at making it to to um, Phoenix. I didn't include William Byron in there because he's got a pretty healthy lead right now. So barring something bad happening on Sunday, he's more than likely going to at least point his way into Phoenix. But for Larson and his team, they knew they could go out there and be aggressive. They knew they could take chances. And I think that's maybe what Larson's mentality was right there. Like, we're locked in. You know, if we get hit for speeding, it sucks. But, you know, it's not the end of the world because we're already moving on. Uh, for his team, I don't think Cliff Daniels probably agrees with that. They went back and forth on the radio, and it was pretty tense. And Cliff Daniels is really intense on the radio. He's a, he's a guy that wants the best out of his driver at all times. And... He wasn't happy with Larson giving up the Stage 2 victory to Ryan Blaney. And then Larson was like, yeah, me amigo, Daniel Suarez, raced the shit out of me. And that's why, you know, we didn't get the race or the stage win. And Cliff was not having it. He was like, well, you passed him. You let him back by. So I don't see it that way. And then they argued over setup changes. And then finally, Larson was like, we all need to calm down. And then there was a really long silence. And then they pitted and things seemed to get better after that. But, yeah, it was... Um, it was intense there for a while for Kyle Larson. But I, I've seen a lot of people being like, Kyle Larson continues to make these mistakes. Will he ever be truly, you know, the cup champion that we think he's going to be, uh, to be this upper echelon guy? You know, this the playoff format now is, is really odd in the fact that you don't have to be consistent, right? All you have to do is win, you're into the playoffs, and then if you win in one of the rounds, you're into the next round, and then you can basically just ride your way into a championship doing that. So there's, you don't have to be consistent per se. Eight DNFs kind of proves that. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think that we can really put too much credence into the fact that people are like, oh, he's not consistent enough. Um, he makes too many mistakes. He's already a cup champion. He's already going to be racing now for another championship in two weeks. It Kind of how this format works out, right? And it awards guys who win. And Larson has won at the right times so far. Chris Rebell's won at the right times. Uh, and you don't really get penalized that much for, for not being that consistent. Martin Truex Jr. is a perfect example of that. So let me know in the comments, do you think it was Larson's fault? Do you think it was Blaney's fault? Combination of both of them. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.